Hi everyone, it's Janice Sullivan from Sullivan J Photography and today I'm going to share five tips to get you started in macro photography. So let's get to it. So the first thing that I want you to think about are the lenses. You could get the screw on rings that go on the front, but truthfully, that is not a true macro. We're, I'm talking to you people that really want to get up to one to one macro photographing. One to one is basically saying that your subject is its actual size within the frame of your camera. If you want to get more detailed, then I will go ahead and put a link down in the bottom so you can go read that up. Basically, though, these lenses, the macro lenses, are cut specifically so you can get really close to your subject. I absolutely love them. And if you're going to do macro, save your pennies and get one. I'll put all the links down below where you can buy the different ones. There's a couple different macro lenses. The next lens that I want to talk about is we are into uh, phone photography and the phones are getting better and better. I mean the phone I think now is better than my 5D when I or it's the same megapixels <laughs> that I had when I first when got my first DSLR, uh, my 5D. So this is a macro lens for your phone. So this lens will get up close these are great. I did an unboxing of these. I will put the link down below so you can check them out. So it doesn't do like the one to one. I think it's wild. I don't know the exact ratio of this to tell you the truth, but I do know that these babies get really close and they are a lot of fun on your phone. So that is something that I will share down below also. Lenses. Okay, next, tripods. The reason why I say tripods, yes, you they make lenses good, macro lenses now that you could probably handhold, but I'm talking to you photographers that really want to get up close and want things nice and sharp, at least your focal point nice and sharp. So take the tripods and and go for it. So this right here, I also did an unboxing of this. This is a tripod for your phone. And so it has an adapter that goes onto the phone and all kinds of goodies. So, and it wraps around. So use something like this when you really want to get up close and, and you uh, want to play with that macro, the macro scene. <laughs> and then for your DSLR, I'll bring my beast out. This is old, it's a Manfrotto, but I really like the ball heads. And the reason why is because you, you don't have very much in focus. You really got to get that pinpoint and it's just a little bit of movement with macro you'll see will make a huge difference. So a ball head is really good to have. So this is a great Manfrotto. And then also, let's see if I can, the sucker's heavy. Um, this right here, this piece right here comes out and then it comes through the side so I can take all these legs and push them down up so I can get very low to the ground, which is fun when you're doing outdoor photography and you want to get something really cool, um, getting the ground level. So that is something to look for. Please don't buy the cheapy, um, please don't buy the cheapy tripods. Really look into it. I know I actually need a new tripod. So if you guys have any great tripods, please put them down below. But I will share with you some of the tripods that I think that are good. And yes, save your pennies because in the I've had that thing for years and it still works wonderful. So the tripod. The next thing that I want to talk about is I if you're serious and really want to learn, take your macro work or take your subjects indoors. Go inside, get a table, do find anything. It doesn't matter. You're not going to go show the world what you're going to do right now. You're learning. So I really suggest you do not want to focus on really fine-tuned macro photography at first outdoors because you have that wind element. And when the wind moves, it, it gets frustrating trying to get things in focus. So just play with your stuff indoors. The next tip, number four, is your f-stop. 
When it comes to macro photography, the f-stop is really the important piece of what we do. If you were in, say, sports, you would want shutter speed, but I want you to learn the f-stop. And then the f-stop, what that means, we'll pull this lens out, is that inside your lenses, we're talking DSLR because when you use your phone, these lenses you can't change up. This just basically, this is what it is, but it's still fun to play with. But if you want to really learn, the f-stop is the aperture that is inside here. You can see it in here. That little, there's a, there's, it's kind of like an iris. So the aperture is this little section that it closes and it opens and it closes and it opens. So as it closes, the F number goes higher. So it's like F22. And as it gets larger, the F stop will turn to like 2.8. It's all about mathematics. So don't worry if you want, I can put it down below if you want to learn about f-stops, I'll give you a link you can read about it. But just know that when you have a 2.8, you will have less in focus, less depth of field to work with. As you get larger in the number, which brings the iris smaller, it will seem to be like more is in focus. Really, if you start pushing the f-stop, you can have less in focus and it will be foggy on the outside. So in the advanced YouTubes that I'll do, we're going to talk about stacking. So when you want to play with aperture, I do not tell my students this, but put your camera in aperture priority and start at the 2.8 and then just start shooting. Let the camera do the rest of the work. You don't have to worry about your shutter speed or your ISO. Just have the camera do it, just so you understand the concept of your aperture, because that is really, like I said before, very important to macro photographers. But if you're in my if if you're in my mentorship, I would not have you do that. <laughs> Maybe it's just one time, and after that, it's all manual mode. Okay, so the last thing. Okay, we talked about lens, ball head, uh, indoors, and number five is lighting. As you get closer to your subject, you will lose less light. You will see that there will be less light. You're getting closer and you will have less light. In order to help you out with that, you could use reflectors or, let's see, I have a reflector like this that I actually unbox, so I'll get the link down below. You can bounce light into your subject. So a reflector is a great thing to add light source to your subject. I've used flashlights, uh, anything to help you at first just get the concept of what's going on. So you may need some light if you don't have a good light source. Another light source that you can use is a macro ring, which I've done an unboxing on that, and I'll put that down below. Or you can take your flash like this and you have to take it off of the camera. You will not be able to use the light that's on your camera because of the way the macro is. You've got to have an external light coming in. So you take your flash off the camera and a good thing to do, truthfully, when you get up close like that is to get a snoot. These are very cheap. I will put that down below also. And the snoots, this snoot is really cool. Um, I don't want to get too much, but it has grids. Um, you could play with it, but it gets the light source very close if you want to play with flash or you already have a flash and you don't have the macro ring light as you get into macro. Natural light is a lot of fun, but you know what? I say play with everything. It's a lot of fun to be creative and try new things with macro photography. So again, we've talked about the macro lens. We've talked about the ball head. We've talked about learning indoors, which is huge. Learning your aperture first, and then adding some extra light source if your natural light is not working. So those are the five macro photographing tips to get you started on getting up close and personal with your camera. Hope this helps. If you have questions, please jot me down the questions down below. Check me out at sullivanjphotography.com. I'd love to see you there. And if you like this, please give me a like. I'm just starting out on 
actually being in front of the camera and it's a new experience for me so it's a lot of fun talking about what I love to do which is actually macro landscape and historical travel imagery. Have a great day and see you next time. Thank you.